This is the Thomas Jefferson that revisionist historians teach. Northwest Ordinance of 1787. The utmost good faith shall always be observed towards the Indians. Their land and property shall never be taken from them without their consent. And in their property, rights, and liberty, they shall never be invaded or disturbed, unless in just and lawful wars authorized by Congress. But laws founded in justice and humanity shall from time to time be made, for preventing wrongs being done to them, and for preserving peace and friendship with them. This is the real Thomas Jefferson. His extreme duplicity has been copied and perfected worldwide by governments and corporations to this day. Letter from President Jefferson to the Governor of Indian Territory and future President William Henry Harrison. You will receive from the Secretary of War from time to time information and instructions as to our Indian affairs. These communications being for the public record are restrained always to particular objects and occasions. But this letter being unofficial and private, I may with safety give you a more extensive view of our policy respecting the Indians, that you may better comprehend the parts dealt out to you in detail through the official channel, and observing the system of which they make a part. Conduct yourself in unison with it in cases where you are obliged to act without instruction. Our system is to live in perpetual peace with the Indians, to cultivate an affectionate attachment from them, by everything just and liberal which we can do for them within the bounds of reason, and by giving them effectual protection against the wrongs of our own people. The decrease of game rendering their subsistence by hunting insufficient, we wish to draw them to agriculture, to spinning and weaving. The latter branches they take up with great readiness because they fall to the women, who gain by quitting the labors of the field for those which are exercised within doors. When they withdraw themselves to the culture of a small piece of land, they will perceive how useless to them are their extensive forests and be willing to pair them off from time to time in exchange for necessaries for their farms and families. To promote this disposition to exchange lands, which they have to spare and we want, for necessaries, which we have to spare and they want, we shall push our trading uses and be glad to see the good and influential individuals among them run in debt, because we observe that when these debts get beyond what the individuals can pay, they become willing to lop them off by a session of lands. At our trading houses, too, we mean to sell so low as to merely repay us cost and charges, so as neither to lessen nor enlarge our capital. This is what private traders cannot do, for they must gain. They will consequently retire from the competition, and we shall thus get clear of this pest without giving offense or umbrage to the Indians. In this way our settlements will gradually circumscribe and approach the Indians, and they will in time either incorporate with us as citizens of the United States, or remove beyond the Mississippi. The former are certainly the termination of their history most happy for themselves, but in the whole course of this it is essential to cultivate their love. As to their fear, we presume that our strength and their weakness is now so visible that they must see we have only to shut our hand to crush them, and that all of our liberalities to them proceed from motives of pure humanity only. Should any tribe be foolhardy enough to take up the hatchet at any time, the seizing of the whole country of that tribe and driving them across the Mississippi is the only condition of peace would be an example to others and a furtherance of our final consolidation. Thomas Jefferson, February 27th, 1803.